Our modern notion of what traditional Islamic arts are is determined by high-value items of certain Islamic societies. The two objects that are actually considered most important as examples of Islamic art today are probably calligraphy and architecture. So when we go into a museum, it's really bits of buildings that are frequently on display, but also book arts. What I really was hoping I would be able to accomplish through this project was to come up with a more complicated, nuanced understanding of what religious identity actually ends up being. Jamal Ilyas is leading a first-of-its-kind interdisciplinary study on the cognitive value of art for understanding religion and identity among American Muslims. I work with a number of different artists working in different media, and I also work with different community groups in several cities across the U.S. Our work with community groups is based around their understandings of the role of art and specifically of Islamic religious art in society. Our data gathering system is entirely interview based. It is ultimately an anthropological method that we're using. What is really important is I'm not just seeing the artists as producers. I engage with these artists actually as understanders as well. So when we talk about cognition, there's the cognition of the person who most intimately engages with the art, which I consider extremely important for understanding what art does. Shahza Sikandar is a truly interesting artist. So she was trained in Pakistan at the premier art school in that country as a miniature painter. Her career has actually been using these highly skilled techniques but working in different media, working on a completely different scale than what a traditional miniature actually ends up being. The appellate division of the New York Supreme Court in Manhattan, that building has a series of statues of great lawgivers throughout history on the roof of it. She noticed that one sculpture was missing at one corner. So she researched it and she realized that it was actually a sculpture of Muhammad that had been removed in the 1950s. She approached the Madison Square Park Conservancy, which actually is responsible for that building and its art, and proposed to them that she would like to make a sculpture to represent female lawgivers because it's all men with beards and robes. So she has this absolutely fantastic sculpture that she had installed on the roof of that building. And then there's also in Madison Square Park, which is a small park outside the building, she has a version of the same thing on a larger scale, which people can approach and it's sitting on top of grass and it's very beautiful. When we think about history, identity, and I'm placing religion in a sense within both those categories. It's not just about her identity as someone from a Muslim background or a Muslim woman or a Pakistani woman, but it's about how we represent historical personages. How do we understand the place of women in the history of justice and law? My conversations with Shazia Sikandar around this project, and I have to say also with the other artists, are extremely informative for me. Modern Islamic artists have an interesting relationship with the heritage of Islamic art. There is a consciousness of being someone today who's engaging with historical traditions. If I was to summarize my project, it is looking at a specific religious community, which is internally extremely varied, and seeing how members of that religious community feel that art informs their understandings of their place in the world and the world more broadly. That religious community happens to be the Muslim religious community in the United States. 